Good morning and thanks for watching. My name is Sharai Hajai or AJ and today is August 11, 2019. The time is approximately 9.45 a.m. on a Sunday morning and thanks for watching. I'm going to continue discussing the serial harassments and identity theft continued violation and retaliation against me for no apparent reasons. Like I mentioned in part one, I'm not a social butterfly. I was an accountant by trade. I stayed to myself and looked after him, took care of my son who had Asperger and all these bad things happened to me. But before I go into more details of what's going on in the past and going forward, kind of going back and forth in time, I am going to show you a problem. I, I get constantly harassed because I have to carry personal things with me else I won't have them because of this. People false impersonating me. Um, people want to take advantage of me. They want to whore me. They want me to enjoy myself. That's the new word. That's the soft word about it now. They want me to enjoy myself. They, don't, they want to prostitute me. so they can take advantage of my information. And I had to step out of my circumstances, my cancer, as you see, you see it here, it hurts right in here. That's sound like I'm groggy, but it hurts, you see. And I, if I stretch it out, let's see. <laughs> I keep my hair down so it, to hide it. And you can see the other little wop-sided on this side. It's, it's spreading. I want to show you my um, brief business briefcase that they keep claiming I'm homeless and it's a buggy. Now, if you look up the word buggy, it doesn't look like a buggy or a shopping cart or anything above. These are the stigmatization that's placing me in false light so they can take a advantage of me and this continuous violation problem even where I am now 725 miles or 750 miles away nor from where I used to live and I don't have no support system because of this problem and when I moved here they were already here because they were watching me in that old apartment and there's a person in my building on the first floor keep telling me that they can't help them. That's all I know. I know they're here. They were here. They probably moved here under some covert operation because I, they know I'm on my authentic identity and they can't prove it with the blood work, but they want to take advantage of me. They can't help me. Like, intentionally soliciting me in an involuntary servitude on the 13th Amendment so they could take advantage of my information behind my back. Well, let me, I forgot to show it to you in part one, but here it is. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me catch it. <clears throat> my, my voice is hurting. <clears throat> there it is. This is my my briefcase. It doesn't look like a buggy. And you see there's locks on it. I always keep it locked even when I'm inside the apartment. But these are just my folders for logging on to things. I have been trying to clean it up to make it smaller and I have and I'm still working on it because of this problem. It doesn't look like a buggy, does it? But they claim I'm homeless that justify the community of banishment or the community abuse that they don't want to live around a homeless person and I'm not. 
there are some problems with the rental market with this issue I've discovered and I'm missing some things that should have came in the mail I have informed delivery and I never got it I know they sent out copies and I never got those copies but they mentioned that they had it in their possession because they my it's credit reports I'm missing my credit reports of a change of address Now, I want to discuss, kind of have a note here, it probably be a part three, my high school diploma. I don't know what happened to my high school diploma when I graduated in 1982. I know I'm in the yearbook, page 33. I had my diploma, never thought to order my transcripts, not once. The first time I ordered my transcripts was in 2012, and I knew I was leaving the state, and I ordered it this year before I left, my second copy. The first copy was missing quite a bit of things off of it. It was manipulated. My grades were where they were A's. They took the A and made a D out of it, and you can still see the legs from the A above, below it. There were, it looked like someone was switching my classes around or stole my literature class in my sophomore year. It was in my freshman and sophomore year, it was terrible with this manipulation. And it didn't even show up. They had me down as reading lab two and I never took reading lab two. Under the first copy, they missed my driver education uh, paperwork behind it. And then the second copy, it was on there. They were changing all of my grades around and manipulation, especially in my freshman and sophomore year. I only needed 18 credits to graduate. I graduated with over 20, which I think the standard is 21 or 22 now. I never authorized anyone or any one person to get access to that transcript. The first time, like I said, I ever, ever ordered it was in 2012. And then again, I ordered two copies before I left this year in Illinois, where I lived. And I paid for two copies. I only received one. One of the copies were missing. And I wrote them about it. The second thing I want to mention is the economic espionage issue behind this problem. I don't know if they're getting access claiming that they were married to me. I was never married because of this problem been going on for decades behind my back without my acknowledgement. And they were holding my, my information as public domain. That's what I discovered for years now, what they've been doing with my information was holding it as, even my IDs, like a public domain or an open source. So in other words, what they did, what I had discovered, what they were doing was they were changing their major PII and linking their background, my, my background to theirs without, without documentation, without support. And when they did this, especially when I was in the DMV, that's how I, I picked up on it. They would always have to manually key everything in. I swear to you on the Holy Bible. They had to manually key my name, my address, everything back in height. That's when I knew that the system was overwritten and they had to, they were always, every time I went in there to update it or change of address, 
there was always a manipulation. Everything had to be manually entered. Now, whether the picture was changed is probably highly probable. But from, when, from what I understand, one officer told me that there's, a, there's photographs and under your, under your, your state identification card and driver's license, there will be the photographs of the people that's on it, who took it. and they were taking advantage of me without my information. I don't know the person that claimed they were married to me did this and then basically behind my back and then distribute those IDs out to people. I never was married. I'm over 55 and I never was married. I don't know how they were getting access to it. Like I said in my first part one video, I never suffered dementia, as they claim, nor married. Or they were giving it to them on an honest system. I never authorized it. And then they claimed that I was a male by birth, and I'm not a male by birth. My identification, my birth certificate, all of my identification says female. And I was being discriminated because of my birth sex and gender identity being a female. That's why they want to prostitute me, to gay me, because they took advantage of my information without my acknowledgement. Now, the reason why this issue came up about me being married was someone came to me when I lived in Naperville before I moved and told me that I was married and I did not look like that person in that marriage photograph. I don't know if they receive that marriage certificate on forged or fraudulent identity, but the courthouse or wherever they allow those marriage licenses have to have security cameras there. It wasn't me. And the only way to keep doing things behind my back that I never authorized. And I never got married because of this issue. Then there was rumors that people were doing this to me because they didn't want me to marry a white guy. This, this is how this whole thing started. Or date a white person. I am not a homosexual person or practice same sex orientation. But what I did figure out behind this was they were trying to force a same sex orientation on me because of the rumors. And I'm not sure if this marriage certificate is a marriage certificate or a civil union certificate. I'm not sure, I didn't, I didn't forgot to study the law on the marriage, if they allow same sex to get married under a certificate or a civil union or both, I'm not sure. But apparently I'm supposed to be married to a same sex person, which causes me to be targeted by religious organizations and the public that believe in one man and one woman 
when it wasn't me who got married. And the reason why they did this is to disguise this false sex determination on me and these rumors, these, uh, not rumors, but this defamation of character that I'm a homosexual person. So they wouldn't be sued when I'm not. And then this will justify, this will also justify them forging my credentials. I think there's some religious organizations involved in this problem to allow them to put me in serial false light in order to compromise my credentials. They have an excuse when there really wasn't for no apparent reason. So they can distribute my information to help domestically uneducated people from what I understand. I get, a, I get quite a bit of domestic uh, problems with this as well as undocumented. Forging my signature when I never authorized it on a lease agreement. I had something happen, remember I mentioned in part one with one of my accounts and I know they has two verification on it and they were able to compromise it and it all happened on June 20, this is August, July 26. July 26 was an interesting day. The neighbors that I'm suspicious of jumped up and moved out the next day because it was on a Friday. I found out they had compromised that account after I changed the password. And someone said they, people, when I say someone, I don't know these individuals, but they count, they're angels to me because they know what's going on, but they don't want to have a direct um, legal involvement with this issue. So they were printing out my information, the verification of income, so they can forge my signature on leases I never, I never signed. The apartment you see, that's the only one I signed for, and I have not sub subleased or for or signed a lease for a person. I don't even know these people. I just moved here. I don't know anyone because this this method caused me to be isolated. They make sure I'm isolated and nobody befriend me because of this problem. So when they did this, this forged marriage license, I'm assuming on the same sex, it wasn't I who authorized it. It wasn't me who participated in it. It was a forgery. That marriage or civil union is a, is a forgery signature. It was not mine. It took me a while to figure out what they'd done to me for no apparent reason. My family, my immediate family was affected by these manipulations and behind my back forgeries. Yesterday I went into, I can't afford many things. I only get so much from on a fixed income with my cancer. I went into Goodwill and these I've been in that goodwill since I moved here. I think it might be my third time, third time in goodwill. And since May 1st, since I moved here. And the people that were there are no longer there. But there was a Hispanic guy at the register with lots of tattoos on him. I was in the thrift store next door and I gave them my my purchase bag. I don't leave my briefcase or my folders with them. 
And I went looking around. And as I was looking around, he shouted. He, we shout, he shouted in the store. I can hear him. We want to throw this B-I-T blank H back into the coal. I continued looking around, purchased my items, went to the register. A Caucasian woman was standing at the register as I was leaving and packing up my things inside my bag, my little cat bag. And she threatened me as well. We're gonna correct your issue. And I just left out of the store for no apparent reason. I get this all the time, all the time. I was assuming if I move, my life will be a little bit lighter with this issue. It's even worse. When I moved here, I did a lot of investigation um, race, demographics, and so forth, education um, demographics, and analyses, and all of a sudden, there were, there were whites in this complex now, they are all moving out, and Hispanics are moving in, they got, already got the gang signs on the, on the, on, on the convenience store, on the corner, walls and so forth. I never gave anyone my credentials unless they were stolen. I never authorized anyone to um, change my information. I don't even want my social security number changed legally because there's been threats about that as well, that they were going to legally change my social security number. And I do not want my social security number changed for this, for this reason. It only makes it worse. Yesterday before I went to the thrift store in Goodwill, someone stood and they showed me my door right behind me, right behind me. Okay, that's, the, that's the entry door in and out of my apartment. Someone stood outside my apartment yesterday and told me it was a male voice. I was standing in the kitchen probably doing something, cleaning, washing dishes or something. You keep your apartment, and I quote, you keep your apartment nice and clean for that Hispanic teacher. Then we're gonna lock you out of your apartment. Second time, they threatened to lock me out of my apartment. They threatened to deport me. I forgot to mention that in part one. They wanted to deport me like I'm an undocumented person. And I have a rare blood type. And fingerprint in the FBI file for what they illegally done to me in 2009. That Hispanic guy told me he was gonna throw me in the in the street, they want the, the Hispanic race want to throw me in the street because I'm on my right paperwork so they can live off of it. But they're not the only race group that I'm having a problem with this or a religious organization. Some of these religious organizations are behind this. Um, they want to help them or the advocacy groups want to help them but they want to help them on my paperwork. And I'm not supposed to live. I'm supposed to ride in the streets while they advance an American dream on my paperwork. I'm so sorry. My voice is hurting now, so I'm gonna have to cut it short. This is part two. 
Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.